Hey, what's going on? This video, we're going to get some more hands-on experience with nested while loops. And I want to get a sum of numbers, which you can do with a while loop, but I don't just want to get a sum of numbers, right? I want to get a sum of numbers for numerous numbers. Mind blown yet? Yeah, mine too. I don't even know what I'm talking about. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to say j is 0. And while j is less than, we'll just start with 10 here, all right? So this is gonna go zero through nine. And I wanna sum up these numbers. And here's how you would do something like that. You would create a sum, set it to zero. And each iteration, we're going to add whatever i is to it. So we'll start with zero, then we add one, then we add two, then we add three, so forth. And each iteration, we're gonna to need to increment i, so i plus equals one. And then at the end, what we're gonna do is we're going to print sum and heck, I'm even gonna go the extra yard and make it pretty for you guys. So we'll say sum comma sum. All right, so um, we broke it. Oh, that's because I use J up here and I down here. See, I'm a noob. So we're gonna go in here, type J, literally told you guys not to make that stupid mistake in the previous video and I just did it. So sum is 45, I think that's right. Yep, zero through nine, 45. Now what I wanna do is I want to put this loop inside of another loop. So right now we're going zero to nine, but what I wanna do is I wanna get the sum from zero to nine, zero to eight, zero to seven, zero to six, all the way down to zero. So we're actually gonna make a loop that counts down. We're gonna start at nine, so we'll say i is nine. And while i is greater than, and let's just go with, negative one, or you could do greater than or equal to zero. That's fine too. And then we're gonna do something and then say i minus equal one. So it'll decrement, oh, a son of a beanbag. Okay, where was I? This video is like the worst, I tell you what. All right, so in here, we're actually going to take this loop, cut it, paste it in here, and make sure everything is indented nice and pretty. So now instead of going up to 10 here, I actually want to go up to i. And you can see i is one less, so if we want to match this uh, a loop that we created, we can say less than or equal to i. And let's just output this, see what we get. Run this, and we get a whole bunch of sums. The very first one up here is 45, and then it just goes down from there. So to me, the syntax for nested while loops just looks like total garbage. Like, it's hard to even see what's going on here, so we need to break this down step by step. We start with i is nine, and we're going to go down to zero, including zero. For each iteration of that, what we're gonna do is we're going to get the sum from zero, starts at zero every time, up to i. So that first iteration, we're going to go up to nine and include nine, Next iteration, we're gonna go up to eight and include eight, and then seven and six, five, all the way down to zero. So that is how we get these sums here. So yeah, nested while loops, syntactically kind of gross. And another thing that we could do to improve this, well, if you take a look at the sum, it is purple, which means it's being used somewhere. So we don't wanna override that. So what we should do is probably use a different variable. So let's say added. And there we go, now it's white. Added, and then replace it here as well. All right, just run and make sure everything's good. All right, there you go. All right, so to be honest, even I stumbled through this, but the point is that sometimes nested while loops are just gross and you should use nested for loops, or what we're gonna get into later on is create functions to isolate a particular behavior. In the case of, of what we're doing here, we could have isolated the, the summing there or use an available sum function already. And we could, we could then call that and make our code a whole lot cleaner. But we will get into that later on. Next up, we're going to review all the loop stuff we've talked about thus far before we move into the next section. And trust me, you'll want to stick with it because after loops, we're getting into custom functions, which is going to make coding a whole lot funner and a whole lot easier. Oh man, I want beef jerky.